No, that's true. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. If we criticize Jewish people, people who are Israelites, then we're in big trouble. We're anti-Semitic. We're racist. But they can criticize themselves all they want. Uh, not even criticize. No. But Joel Stein in the LA Times magazine that I'm quoting from 2008, and there is more recent material I'm going to give you because this is so fantastic. And to some of you, this is going to seem so wrong. And Zender, why are you talking about this? I'm going to be reading other recent articles uh, concerning Jewish control of the media and what this has to do with the intoxicant of Babylon and what this has to do with preparing the world to, be, to, to, to succumb to the wiles of the Antichrist, to reject critical thinking, to reject logic, and to rely on emotionalism. Hi everyone, Martin Zender here, The Revelation Series. It's emotionalism that runs Christianity. Emotionalism tries to, is trying to run politics. And emotionalism definitely runs the media and it runs entertainment. I mean, we all want our emotions plucked and delighted, you see. But it leads to faulty thinking. What we want is critical thinking what we want is logic what we want are people who understand language so that we can understand the scriptures but my god who has time for the scriptures who has time to study the scriptures very few um even those of us in the body of christ there are only a, a few of us that really study that help bring this material to the rest of you. And that's fine. That's fine. Because at least you're getting fed from somebody who is studying the scriptures. But the world at large, whatever Bible they do get, you notice I distinguish the Bible from the scriptures. Why do I do that? Well, the Bible is the popular book. The Bible is the best-selling book in the world. I don't study the Bible. I'm not a Bible guy, even though I call myself the world's most outspoken Bible scholar. I got to quit that. I don't like that. But scripture sounds awkward, but it, but it's the truth because scriptures are the writings. When I say scriptures, I'm talking about the original writings as dictated to human beings under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Those are the scriptures. It's true. I call my collection of these the scriptures. Uh, but um, it's not the originals. No, I don't, I don't have the originals. I'm still hoping the originals show up somewhere. You know, like maybe at a yard sale in Milwaukee or I don't care where they show up. They can show up in... They can show up in uh, Anchorage, Alaska. That's fine. I couldn't think of a city there. <laughs> All the cities in America, I couldn't think of one. Let's see. One city in America. Oh, jeez. Anyway, let me read for you from um, the New Observer. This is from July 6, 2014. This is an article by... Is the author mentioned here? Strangely, no. The all-out attack by the Jewish supremacist Anti-Defamation League, ADL, on actor Gary Oldman for daring to mention that Jews run Hollywood has highlighted the fact that Jews can routinely boast about that fact. And I'm reading an article to you, started yesterday from Joel Stein in the LA Times. He is boasting of the fact that Jews, and I'm sorry, but that's it just sounds racist to say Jews. I'm not racist. I'm the last person who's racist. I'm a realist. I call things how they are. And um, Jews run Hollywood. Jews are people who de are descendant from the house of Judah. Strictly. That's where the term comes from. Maybe a little history lesson is in order here. Uh, Jew is a takeoff, if you will, from of Judah. Shortened form. Kind of a slang. Judah. It was at one time strictly those descendant from the house of Judah. Because in the days after Solomon, as you know, God split Israel, there was a civil war, a faction, and ten tribes separated from the two southern tribes. There was trouble in the homeland, a civil war. 
but they didn't actually fight. They just said, well, we're going to pick up our toys and go home. And the 10 northern tribes, under Rehoboam and Jeroboam, one of those was the king of Israel. One of those was the king of Judah. And the 10 tribes of Israel said, we're going to create a competing tabernacle system. So they went up to, of all places, Samaria. That's why the Samaritans in our Lord's day were always looked down upon. Oh, shh, here comes a Samaritan. Shh, 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 shh. Because they were from those rebellious people of the 10 tribes. But they were called the house of Israel. And the southern tribes, Benjamin and uh, the Levites, because they ran the true temple, they stayed in Jerusalem. There were other tribes mixed in. I mean, you, it wasn't strict. It's not to say that there were absolutely no Benjamites along, uh, in the, the Sumerian group, that, the 10 tribes, and uh, there were absolutely no, um, say, Issacharians down in Jerusalem. So it, it was a bit of a mingle. Like you do at a party, swishing your cocktails. Um, are you from Issachar? Yeah, what are you doing here? Oh, I just wandered down from Samaria. Anyway, so the Jews were originally only those from the house of Judah, the two tribes that stayed in Jerusalem. But the term, as terms tend to be, has become more inclusive, all inclusive. So before you know it, the term Jew refers to all descendants of Abraham through the seed of Isaac. Although, listen, it's a mess out there. Only God can distinguish who's who, what's what, but there are no doubt some who are from Ishmael. Abraham had two sons. Well, I think he had more than two, but the only sons I'm concerned about now, Isaac and Ishmael. Ishmael was the son of bondage, come through Hagar, the handmaid of Sarah. Isaac was the son of the promise. They both produced people. Ishmael produced the Arabs. They came out of Ishmael. And see, Ishmael and Isaac, they were stepbrothers, right? Uh, one came from the handmaiden, which was Ishmael. One came from Sarah, the true mother, the mother of faith, the mother of us all. And that was Isaac. And they, they fought. And as you can imagine, Sarah and her handmaiden, Hagar, that's her name, sorry, they were, you know, a little, well, they both had sex with Abraham, and they probably compared notes, as women tend to do, and, and they, they became a little animositous. I just made up that word, people who are have animosity toward each other, animositous, and they had it, buddy, so there was fighting there. And then, of course, Ishmael and Isaac, there was a little scuffle there as well and there continues to be a scuffle in the desert between ishmael and isaac between the arabs and the israelis that's why that's going on today in case someone out there doesn't realize that there's enmity between the brothers the step uh and there will continue to be until jesus christ returns so jews i'm going to just say it then okay you can refer back to this video and i'm just going to say it I don't mean it disrespectfully. I am for everyone. I'm for all people. I want people to be happy. I'm for blacks. I want blacks to be happy. I want whites to be happy too. That's another thing. You can't criticize blacks without being racist. You can't say that Obama is a lousy president without being accused of being racist. Oh, you just hate blacks. No, I don't. I hate lousy government. I hate lousy policies. Ah, uh, But, you know. I don't hate Jews. I love Jews. It just so happens that they run the media, and I'm saying there's a reason for it. Back to this article. And then I'm going to read from uh, A. Enoch here from The Unveiling of Jesus Christ. This is going to blow your mind because he's writing in 1930 at the beginning of these things, and he, he's like he's prescient. It's like he's looking into a crystal ball. Um, Oldman, known for his roles like Harry Potter's Sirius Black and spy George Smiley in Tinker Tailor's Soldier Spy. I've never seen these stupid movies. Whoever heard? Tinker Tailor's Soldier Spy? Anyway, when Oldman was asked in a recent Playboy interview about actor-producer Mel Gibson's earlier remarks about Jews, he said that, quote, Mel Gibson is in a town 
that's run by Jews, and he said the wrong thing because he's actually bitten the hand that I guess has fed him. Unquote. For this sin, Oldman was condemned by the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, and immediately issued a groveling apology, saying that he hoped his heartfelt apology would be received as genuine as he intended it to be, and that he has nothing against the Jews. Everybody has to crawl today for making any comment about any other race other than their own, because it's immediately assumed that that person is a racist, because we are hardwired in this politically correct era to think the worst of everyone, and you just aren't allowed to offend anyone today, uh, because everyone's feelings are so delicate, because we are, live in a generation that has been undisciplined. And this really is a result of this very problem I'm talking to you about, this entertainment industry that has made us all vapid and stupid and, and sensitive, and, and so nobody's hardy anymore. Uh, there's too many love stories, I guess. Uh, you think it's... Ah, uh, yeah, I guess, yes. Wait, you think it's the... You think it's the violence. Yeah, you might have a point there. You might have a point. People are desensitized. This is another aspect of it that I'm going to get into. And this was a part of the book I mentioned for arguments for the elimination of, of television is the desensitization to violence. The violence on television and the movies is absolutely unbelievable. People, unbelievable. people have a hunger for it. They want to see people shot. They want to see people stabbed. They want to hear guns going off. I absolutely run from this stuff. I can't stand it. My favorite movies, romantic comedies. I love romantic comedies. I like to love and laugh. Let me love and laugh. <laughs> and I like um, movies where people talk a lot, you know, intellectual movies, character driven movies. Forget the action movies, cars blowing up, my God. So I think that this is making people sensitive or it's desensitizing people to violence, but it's making them sensitive to offense. That's what I want to say. It makes them sensitive to offense and everybody offends them and it doesn't take much in, oh, you just touched a nerve and I have the right now to be indignant because everybody in the movies is. You can't get away with anything in the movies. They pull a gun on you. Make my day. So this is, yeah. And I remember, this is so funny because I remember as a kid, I would. I went to like the Smokey and the Bandit movies. I went to that. Oh, uh, the one. I think it was the first one starring Burt Reynolds, and uh, and um, who was the guy who played Buford T. Justice? I just saw him interviewed on the on old Johnny Carson show, or uh, Jackie Gleason. I've been in high speed pursuit of a goddamn maniac for the last five hundred miles. That was Buford T. Justice. So I would come out of that movie and I remember getting in my car. I just learned to drive. I was 16 and I get out of a movie where there's fast cars and Buford T. Justice is barreling down the road trying to catch uh, Burt Reynolds. And I remember coming out of that movie. I was everybody. Look, no matter who you are, you're affected by this stuff to some degree. I come out of that movie driving like a lunatic, driving like a NASCAR guy. All tough, you know, uh, because I just I just seen that movie. So the effect, nobody can doubt. I think it's beyond refutation that of the effect that movies and television and video games and music has had on this culture. But I think that what's up for argument is the, to gr the, the degree to which this ha has happened. And I claim to you that it's been to a degree that has profoundly made this generation. Incidentally, the same generation that at the end of that spiking chart, that exponential curve we were looking at, that generation, the generation of the end, at the same time, this entertainment has absolutely pummeled people. So this is these things are happening simultaneously. I would like to see charts of people's brainwaves. I would like to see charts of people who play video games all the time. The brains of those people, the people who 
who just suck on the breast of entertainment. They can't get away from the television. They can't get away from their, they got the earplugs in their ears all the time. They got their iPods plugged in. You watch these people, uh, I've been, you know, back in when the Olympics was on, all these athletes come out, Michael Phelps, and they all come out and they're, and they're got their headphones on and they're like, they're, they're detached from real life. They're detached from the world because they have to get into their heads because they have an amazing thing they have to do. They have to swim in water for 100 meters and try to do it faster than anybody else. And who really cares? So it's a bad check written to cover a bad check. Uh, the first bad check uh, written is dedicating your life to swimming faster than everybody else in a swimming pool. And then the second bad, bad check written to cover that bad check is you have to play uh, heavy metal music in your head to enable you to concentrate to swim faster than everybody else in that swimming pool. And as a result, you get a trinket called a gold medal that does not contain gold. It contains a trace amount of gold, but it's not gold. So, so that you can have this medal and then you're happy and they play the national anthem. <laughs> And the Jimi Hendrix is out there, and um, and uh, what happens? What happens? They walk away, and uh, the the next day they're upset again. They're back to having the toed. And what good does the gold medal do? Uh, the stuff we're discussing, the the truth, the evangel of Jesus Christ, it, it might not make you ecstatically happy, uh, but it, it it's steady. It's a steady stream of energy, enough to get you by. It doesn't fail you. It doesn't go away. Uh, you don't have to listen to heavy metal music in order to get inspired for it. It's the truth. <laughs>